Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us today with this mindfulness workshop that the Gervais Syndrome Foundation and Aaron have graciously put together for us. And one thing I'd like to do first is just an honor of gratitude. This is the Barthwee Bellevue studio um, where I practice and also teach and they're honoring us with their space today. And my friends are Aaron and Lindsay, who Lindsay I've um, never met before. So this is, this is beautiful, thank you. Uh, thanks for making this happen, Aaron. Okay. So one thing that I, um, I think it's really important to acknowledge, first and foremost, is the value that a caregiver has. And one thing along my personal journey of 23 years, being a caregiver to somebody with Dravet syndrome, is losing my own identity, losing value in who I am as Amanda, and that essence of who I was before the word Dravet came into my vocabulary. I've created a couple of notes. Usually when I speak, I have a big presentation, but we're going to create this more of an intimate um, environment. But the, the first thing, um, value, is knowing that you are so much more than this disease. And I, I can speak firsthand that over the 23 years of caring for Stella, um, I forgot who I was. I forgot my value in my own personal life. And I became a title, and that title was a caregiver. So my last 10 years have been a journey of education and working with um, some of my teachers that have really infused the importance of finding my own value again. And a lot of that comes through mindfulness. And so our workshop today is titled Mindfulness, Movement, and Meditation. And those are three M's that I live my life through. So mindfulness, what is that? And it's something that I can um, perhaps infuse some curiosity because we hear the word mindfulness, it's very trendy, especially if you're on social media. But mindfulness in the way that I would like to um, support the value of you is mindfulness in who you are and how you show up for yourself and not just for your loved ones, not just for your Dravet child or in my case, young adult now, but in how you show up for yourself. And that can look many different ways. Um, we think of mindfulness on the food that we eat mindfulness on our community that we surround ourselves with, mindfulness on how we speak to ourselves, and mindfulness of living within our heart space. And caregivers are really good at disassociation, which would be losing that core identity of who you were before Dravet entered your world. You know, who was the person, not your career, not the title of being a mom or a daughter, brother, husband, teacher, but who you are. So as we talk about this mindfulness section, I just want you, that to stir up some emotion inside of you. And there's no bad emotion. Okay, so we have our box of tissues handy in case something comes up. And one thing that I encourage you at home, if something does come up, Allow it to be more of a somatic experience, and that is being in your body. So a word can trigger an emotion, and then the somatic response is what we feel in our body. And getting out of the head and coming into the body is where a lot of the deep healing work starts. And our journey as caregivers is a journey of healing. Um, there's a term that I have coined, and I'm working with the uh, medical board to try and get this entered into literature today, and it's CCTSD. We've all heard of PTSD, but what we go through is chronic, and it is continuous. It does not live in our past. It is trauma. It is a stress syndrome that lives within us every single day. So PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, CCTSD, chronic continuous 
then you've got the trauma, then you've got the stress disorder. And it really needs to be recognized so that health professionals can look at us beyond the person we're caring for, that we ourselves have our own unique healing journey. Okay, that's a lot, right? That's a lot to think about. And um, so how do we do that? Having a toolbox, I call it a toolbox. And your toolbox can look very different than Lindsay's. It can look different than myself or Aaron's. But our toolbox, you can think of it as if you go into your basement and you have a light bulb that needs changing, we need a tool, perhaps. Actually, that's a really bad analogy. But I think you get what I'm saying. In my case, it would be a ladder. There's my tool. Um, but it's a toolbox to help you cope, something that you can turn to when you're feeling anxiety, deep pain. Um, and your toolbox can be a ritual that you build on over time. So it becomes a part of who you are. And one thing that I will share in my life, um, part of my toolbox, is I've actually given my daughter another name when we have the seizures, the Amanda part of me can cope. It's what I've dealt with for 23 years. Then we turn into this other um, cycle in our home, which is a really aggressive behavior. And I had to come up with a way to cope with that. And so with my therapist, we came up with another name. And so I can actually label her as a different personality. And we're not going to go into personality disorder, but it kind of goes along that line, is if you can have a way to identify what it is that you're going through, what it is that you're feeling, what it is that's coming your way, then that can anchor you to coming back to your value. And so that name we gave my daughter is Samantha. And so it's a cue. I'm not dealing with Stella. I'm actually dealing with another personality. So it's a tool. It's a simple name change. But it's an immediate recognition that this is not my child. This is not the Stella who I love, who loves me back. This is a completely different person right now who's on her own healing journey. So I can stand back and I can actually think that so that I'm not in a state of reactiveness I'm in a state of response, and that is a healthy mindset. So mindfulness, we can move our body, we can nourish our body, but we can also go beyond the body, we can go to the mind, and we can go to the spirit. So a couple of things that I've jotted down, which I think is really important to remember, that mindfulness is more than what society is telling us, daily affirmations, eating a salad, drinking a green juice, which is um, forms of self-love. So mindfulness is more of self-compassion. And a couple ways that we can think about this really easily is Lindsay calls me and she's in a state of panic. Things are falling apart at her house. I'm going to pause I'm in a clear space in my own mind and even somatically in my body so I can hold space for her, so I can listen. She can tell me what it is that's going on and I am responding versus reacting. And a lot of times what we do when we're in that state of um, anxiety, fear, what, what, anguish, pain, we no longer have that space for ourselves and so we're reacting. So one thing to think about is when you're having these um, feelings of uncertainty arise is to hold space for yourself. It could be a one, two, three, and we'll talk about that in a second. It could be a five, four, three, two, one. We'll talk about that in a second. But again, it's digging into your toolbox and finding what is it that I need in this moment that can support me. And so some of these little rituals are easy enough that you can do 10 times a day, 20 times a day. It could just be that pause and reflect, or it could be where it becomes part of your ritual. Um, so treating yourself as you would treat a close friend or a loved one. And when you find yourself, um, it could be self-doubt, the self-deprecation, um, just the negative Nelly in your mind 
is this how you would speak to your friend? And the answer is probably no. Um, you'd stand up with compassion, with grace, with space. Mindfulness exercises, so grounding exercises. At the moment, the only person that's touching the earth is Aaron. And I'm grounded in my seat, but that's a daily practice that I have. So something very simple, in a seated position, you want to scoot your tushy back so that you're not in a tucked spine, so that your cervical spine all the way down through the lumbar curve is neutral. Now, what it kind of looks like is that you pull the meat of your bottom back and so that you're sitting in front of your sits bones. It allows you to sit a little taller. It allows your heart to open and receive. And already you have the somatic response of confidence. You're sitting taller. You have a little more strength in your backbone. You're not curved in. You're not feeling withdrawn. You don't have that shallowness to you. You're a little more upright. And so that could be a very simple tool, just sit slightly different. So that's a grounding way to sit. The other thing that I love that Erin's done is she's chosen to have her feet touch the floor. But I want you to scoot your bum a little further forward so that the four corners of your feet are actually touching. And what happens here, it's kind of awkward, right? Kind of awkward. I don't have anything to lean against. So now I have to use my core. I have to come into my body so that I'm a little more comfortable. And I'm going to adjust again. So my bum is coming a little further towards the end. I really can plant my feet. I can let my spine adjust, sitting a little taller. And then you become a little more aware there's something underneath me. It's underneath my feet. It's underneath my seat. And that is supporting me. And as we move along this conversation, these are all things that we know. It's nothing new. It's just looking at what our daily activities are and how we can turn those into a mindfulness way of supporting our healing journey. And as caregivers, our day is a healing journey every day. Um, let's move on. Somatic self-regulation. And this is one of my favorites. So a couple things here. Think of somatic as being in your body, and so it's touch. So please come to a comfortable seated position. If this is how it resonates with you, please stay. I'm naturally going to scoot my bottom back. I'm going to come back into a crisscross applesauce position, and I'm going to adjust the meat of my bottom, so I'm sitting in front of my sits bones, and I'm feeling safe. So this chaos in your environment, you're feeling triggered. And my trigger will look different than yours. And you need something to ground. It could be a big butterfly hug. Just touch yourself. Give yourself a hug. The point of contact, we can slightly drop your chin. Maybe soften or close your eyes. And it could be three breaths, the one, two, three. Your eyes are closed, please blink them open, and then softly release your arms. Now take your left hand and place it right at your heart. Take your right hand and place it on top of your left. And from the shoulders down, let some release come through the back of your neck. Your gaze can soften towards the earth or your eyes can close. Allow your heart to gently kiss your left palm. Feel the warmth of your right palm on your left. And just notice how you allow your breath to naturally become deeper. 
slower. If your eyes are closed, please gently open them and release your hands. Another beautiful somatic embodiment is touch. It could be your face. It could be a gentle play of your hair. It could be rubbing your arms, your palms, feeling the heat, pressing them against your face. So allow yourself just a moment. What naturally resonates with you when I say touch yourself? And as humans, as mammals, touch is normal. Think of a cat who's constantly licking and grooming themselves. A dog who stretches, we call it down-facing dog. In the animal kingdom, they rub themselves against a tree. Touch is a huge part of being a mammal. And as humans, we lose that identity. We touch our friends, we touch our loved ones, we embrace them. But we've taken a step back from embracing ourselves. So when you're putting on your mascara in the mirror, you are actually creating touch. But are you present? Are you in that moment? Or is your mind thinking about what's happening next in your day? As you're you know, putting lotion on your body after your shower, are you thanking your body? Are you loving your body? Or are you already checked out and you're in your office and you're worrying about what's going on hours later? So that the sense of touch and just being present is a beautiful gift of slowing down, resetting the nervous system, and then coming back to that core value of who am I? And that's really what mindfulness is all about. That can be an awkward one for people, just recognizing that the power of touch is a deeply loving gift that we can give ourselves. So um, I can hold space for those of you that are not willing to go there. A couple other ways um, of mindfulness, healthy boundaries, giving too much of yourself up, and then that feeling of overwhelm after, or depletion, feeling so exhausted and wiped out that you need to take a nap, but then we turn to external sources to lift ourselves back up. For some people that could be um, less than healthy food choices, it could be alcohol, it could be other numbing devices, the television, um, et cetera. And one thing that I found is that I found myself over consuming and that is another way of numbing out what it is that I'm feeling taking on too much external noise to crowd out the pain, the conversation that I need to have with myself, which would be one of compassion and recognition that in a state of overwhelm, that it's okay, I'm not the only one going through this. And having that boundary for yourself is something that I personally am working on and I think as a caregiver, it's a, it's a tool that you can le lean into, into your toolbox and just ask, you know what, is this too much right now? Am I adding just a little too much to my plate and could I create a little more space? So again, another really simple tool, but it's being present and mindfulness equals presence. Um, the last thing with mindfulness that I really want to talk about is connection. So we've talked about connecting to self, but connecting to others. And disassociation is something that, um, whether the word has entered your vocabulary or not, it's really easy to disassociate from society. We've all done it during COVID. We know what that's like to no longer have that immediate sense of community. But disassociation from what life is. So it goes beyond disassociating from your friends, your colleagues, um, 
it, it goes into disassociating from your house. So the clutter that you have in your home becomes a reflection on who you are. And so decluttering is a way of mindfulness. It's a way of being present again. And we overlook everything. You could walk by a sock that's been on the ground for three days and not even see it. And yet we've, we've disassociated from this home, this place of love and nurture. But our home is also in our body. And the mindfulness component of really getting to know that this, at your core value, needs to come first. So the connection that you have with others, the connection you have with your home, your office, your loved ones, but most importantly, the connection you have with yourself and recognizing if in any of those areas that there's too much clutter, chances are you have disassociated. And I'm not talking about it in a, um, in a manner of mental health, but more in a way of you've lost your identity again. What I'd like to do is just come to a pause because it's a lot of information that I've thrown at you and just reflect on one takeaway. You know, when you, when you come to our workshop or to a lecture, it's so much and unless you're busy taking notes, you forget everything. So I'd like to just have a pause for a moment um, and just think of one nugget that you can take away, that you can build in your toolbox and allow it to become a part of a daily ritual. So just a, a pause for a moment. May I accept myself as I am. May I be kind to myself. May I remember that we are all human. May I know that others struggle alongside me. May I give myself the compassion I need. May I cherish myself. May I have peace of mind. May I love myself. So I end with the affirmations only because those are simple, simple sentences that we can say when that overwhelm comes and you can label it. This is a somatic response. I'm in my body. It's in my heart. It's in my shoulders. It's in my knees. It's in my head. And coming back to the awareness of self-compassion. So welcome back. This is our joyful movement part of the practice today. I'm going to invite my friends to come to a seated position on the mat. And if you need a pillow at home, you're welcome to place a pillow right behind your bottom. You can also use a yoga block to sit on. You can sit on a pillow so that your bottom is a little bit higher than your knees. Any comfortable position that works for you. Legs can be out. And we'll just take a moment of some really gentle stretching before we enter our bodies. Beautiful. Let your hands rest on your thighs and drop your chin. Roll your right ear to your right shoulder. Take a big inhale here. And exhale, chin down to center. Inhale, left ear, left shoulder. Exhale, chin to chest. Roll the shoulders up and back and allow your heart to lift. Inhale, sweep your hands high. 
exhale, right hand down. Inhale, reach your left hand all the way up. And then release the hand down. Take another inhale and extend your other arm high to the sky. And exhale, lower it down. Sweep your hands behind you in a cape. And this is a place where we hold a lot of tension in the neck. So if your hands cannot come into a bind, and when I say bind, I mean by interlacing your fingers, then I want you just to keep your hands reaching back behind you as you climb your heart a little higher. And then please release that. Allow your hands to come forward. Palms will face each other to interlace the fingers and your palms push away. Take a deep exhale and tone the belly. Round your spine. This is another way of what we call flossing the spine. Take a big inhale. Let your palms lift high to the sky. Take an exhale. Dome and round. Big inhale. Lift, lengthen. Big exhale. Round. One more time. Inhale up. And then on the exhale, plant your hands. You're on all fours. So my friends here, go ahead and shimmy yourself so that you come to the long side of your mat. Walk your hands in front of your shoulders and allow the tops of your feet to remain heavy. Lift your heart and lift your tailbone. And then exhale, pull the navel up and round the spine again. Create a little wave as you do this. Hinge back. Inhale, lift your heart. Pull forward. Exhale, hinge back, round your spine, pull forward. Inhale, go back. Inhale, lift your heart. Do that again. Exhale back. <sighs> Exhaling through the round. One more time. Take it back on your inhale. And then exhale, drop your heels all the way, bottom to heels, sorry, and reach your hands high. And bring your hands to your heart. Okay, we're going to make our way to a standing position. Place your hands on the floor. And allow your toes to curl under and rock back. A little crouch. And then drop your heels and stand tall. Beautiful. We're going to turn and face our friends at home. And you're going to come into a stance that's a little wider than the shoulders. And what I like to think of is that my feet are a triad. So I have the base of my big toe, my pinky toe, and the very center of my heel is heavy. Reach your hands high, inhale up. And then exhale, hinge at your hips, take it down to a forward fold. With a bend in your knees, inhale, bring your hands wide, lift up. Do that again, exhale, hinge at your hips, bend down. Now if you can keep your legs straight the whole time, you're welcome to do that. It's gonna look a little bit different. Keep your heart lifting as you rise. Last one. Allow your hands to hang heavy. If you can touch the floor, feel free to do so. If your hands are hanging heavy, opposite hand to elbow, it's called ragdoll. And pull the chin towards your chest. You should be looking behind you. Notice where your weight is distributed. Are you heavy in your heels or your toes? Are you rolling on the outer ankle? Try to find that balance, big toe, pinky toe, center heel. Now push your bottom to the right. So you're gonna feel more weight in the right foot. Your left inner thigh is pulling towards the right. Now take your left hand to either your shin or your thigh and reach your right hand high to the sky. So my friends that are really tight at home, you're going to be lifting a little higher. Your hand can rest right on the thigh. My friends that are really loosey-goosey, your hand might come to the earth. Bring your heart back to center. Take your right hand over to the left side and reach your left hand high. Allow your hips to pull to the left a little bit more. What we're doing here is we're creating an open pathway through the posterior chain, the calves, the hamstrings, our pelvis. Release your left hand down and take a deep bend in your knees. Okay, you're in what's called a squat. Stand all the way up. 
Bend all the way down. Hinge at your hips. Lift all the way up. So a couple things here as we're moving through this. There's an energy field through the feet as you push down to stand tall. It's really important that we're using that push so the back of our body is engaged. A lot of times as we move in our everyday life, we sit down, we're sitting in our car, we're sitting down at our dining table, on the couch, we just drop. So another point of mindfulness is becoming aware of how we move. Taking it down, lifting back up. Breathing big, breathing longer. Big inhale, big exhale. Let's do four. And you're in your body. Three, two more. And on this last one, I'm going to hold you low. We're going to create a really strong connection to sensation. Thighs might be feeling warmer. Touch of the palm. The shoulders are back. And again, from the cervical spine through the lumbar curve, we're long. So you have an extension through your spine. How are we feeling, guys? Feeling it? Okay. Now raise the right heel. Raise the left heel. Let it be low. Heavy through the toes, beautiful, hold for eight, hold for seven. You've got this for six. The strength you have in your thighs, it's there, I know you've got it, for four, for three, two, and one. Please stand all the way up. Walk your feet a little wider. Open your toes to 10 and two. Take a big bend in your knees. Flush it out. Your toes point open to 10 and two. And your knees are going to track right over your second toe. So as we drop our spine, shoulders stay right over our hips. Heavy in the quads, strong in the core. You've got power in your arms. Now you're going to reach to the left, lower down, and then a big sweep over. And then to the other side. Big extension through the body. Opening through the rib cage, feeling the heat in the thighs, warming up the body, and maybe noticing that your breath is a little different than normal. Last two. Last one. And then come back down. We're low again. Allow your hands to rest at your heart. Feel that warmth in your hands. Let the shoulders roll back. Pull the head of the chin in, and now make a tiny, tiny little pulse. Big toes heavy, pinky toes heavy, and at the very center of your heel. Knee pain, pelvis, low back pain, walk your feet in, work a little higher. Okay, you want to imagine that you're pulling on a really tight pair of pants. So you're hugging energy from the feet all the way through the knees. And then from the knees, you're pulling up through the thighs. And the core is stabilizing you. Picture your top rib. <sighs> Breathe down. Now reach your hands high to the sky and stop moving. Shoulders back. Hold for eight. Feel the heat again. Seven. Maybe come a little lower. Test that boundary for five, for four, three, two, and one. Heel toe your feet in. Friends, we're going to turn and face the very front of our mat and let your hands sweep behind you. Take an inhale. Bring your hands towards your heart. Sit low. On your exhale, push your hands high to the sky. Stand tall. <sighs> inhale, pull. Reach back. Pull in, exhale up, <sighs> inhale, exhale, <sighs> inhale, exhale. <sighs> the reason why I'm having you exhale when your hands go overhead is that you're using breath, your diaphragm, everything is expanding. There's a power, there's an energy lifting you up. Hinge back, lift up, four corners of your feet, nice and heavy. Reach and extend, <sighs> lift up. Now I'm going to hold you back in two more. Take it low 
Extend your arms long. Lift the right heel. Walk your right foot back six inches. Okay? We are on train tracks, not a balance beam. Allow your left knee to glide right over the arch of your foot. Bend your right knee deeply and let your right heel come higher as if it's pushing against a wall. Now drop the right knee down and lift it back up. Drop the right knee down, lift it back up. Knee issues, I want you to walk your right foot right back to the left. Hover the right heel and do the same thing. Sit in your imaginary chair, lift halfway up. Reach your tailbone back. Tone the belly, arms are long and active, lift back up. Go for four, and go for three. Heavy in the left foot, two. Now on this last one, I want you to drop the right knee nice and low. If your feet are in that parallel stance, keep the right heel high. Try to transition all the weight into the left foot. Let your hands come forward, palms touch. If you want to join me, this is testing a boundary. Take your right leg up and hold eight, seven, six. Extend your leg long. Bent leg, warrior three, four, three, two. Stand tall. All right, let's do it again. Hinge back. Exhale up. Reach it back. Lift it up. Five more. Use your breath. I like to hear that. Thank you, Erin. Two more. All the way up. And again, hinge back, hold here. Left heel lifts. Six inches, walk your left foot back. Bend your left knee, keep your left heel elevated. Now drop your left knee, lift back up. Sit your tailbone down. Push to rise. You have a chair behind you. You're trying to touch the chair, even though somebody is pushing the chair backwards. Lift it up. Feel the anchor, the support of your right foot. Feel the stability of the earth below you. The length, the strength you have all the way from spine to muscle. Four more. Three more, keep your hips nice and square. Two to go. And last one, hold here. So remember what we did on the first side? I asked you either to stay here, let your hands come forward, palms touch. And then maybe, just maybe, and this is my wobbly side, lift the left leg up. Go for bent leg warrior three, deep bend in the right knee, extension left leg, four, Three, two, and one. All right, how are we doing? Warm? Okay, let's lay down on our backs, okay? Let's come down to a really simple posture. You can do it when you're watching TV. Walk your feet wide on the mat. Pull your heels directly underneath your knees. Let your arms come to a low V. Heavy your head, heavy the shoulders, and lift your hips up. Hips are lifted one, maybe three inches at the highest point. Again, you have that triad, big toe, pinky toe, center heel. Lift your hips up, hover them down. Lift your hips up, hover them down. It's a bridge lift. Our feet are a little wider. We have space in our pelvis. We're working in a neutral spine. Your core is active. Push down through your feet. Create a tug, like a magnetic pull from the heel to your bottom. Now bring it into mindfulness. Where are you in your mind? Are you present in your body? One thing that's great with joyful movement is there's a smile on your face. So it could be a walk in your neighborhood it could be cranking music, having a dance party in your house. Maybe you choose to climb the stairs at the store versus taking an elevator. 
allowing something to fuel you with a place of compassion, embodying joy because you want to, not because you have to. All right, a couple more. Lift, lift. Lower to a hover. Lift, lift to a hover. Let's go four. And three. And two. And notice as my voice comes down, what's happening with your mind? Hold your hips to the highest point. Again, three inches off the mat. We're not working Jane Fonda here. We're just creating an energy field of activation. So your bottom is off the mat. Arms are heavy in the low V. Feet are actively pushing down that slight magnetic pull. If you really think of that magnetic pull, you'll activate the hamstrings. Your hamstrings are a huge advocate for spinal strength. All the heavy lifting that you do, all the pulling, the reaching, the quick sudden movements due to a seizure that's unforeseen, the strength you have. Just hold the heat. Now lightly transition the weight towards the ball of your foot. Allow your heels to gently lift. Think of an energy from the very center, the arch of your foot pulling up. So heels are lightly lifted. We're wearing a flip-flop, a slipper. We're not wearing a stiletto heel. Just keep holding. Can you activate energy in your calves? Do you start to feel a gentle tremor? The tremor is two things. It is stabilizer muscles that are supporting your functional muscles that you use in everyday life. It is also a somatic body release. The nervous system is saying, hang on, this is getting a little hard. I need to join the party. So the sympathetic nervous system is on. Use it, feel the energy that you have. You've all heard of the superhero mama or daddy that lifts a car off a child. You have that in you. Reach your hands high to the sky. Hold eight seconds. Keep that lift of the heels. Keep the push through the toe and the pinky toe. Four. Hips a little higher. Two. And lower your hips. Touch your knees together. Feet stay wide. Take a deep breath in. Slow exhale out. Take both of your thighs, point them to the right. Legs will stay separated. And gently sway them to the left. To the right. And to the left. Do that one more time in each direction. And then bring your knees up to a tabletop position. So your knees are resting right over your hips. Heels are on the same height as your knees. When I take a march, lower the right toes. Aim for the toes, not your heel, down four inches, six inches, or maybe your toes touch the floor. And then deep exhale, lift back up. Inhale, left leg lowers down. Your exhale, <sighs> lifts it back up. Your right leg lowers. And it lifts back up. Left leg down. Feel free to move with a single leg. Or join the big toes. Open the heels and lower both legs down. Your knees will touch. Deep exhale, lift back up. So if you're working both legs, it's a pyramid stance that we've created. Big toes, knees touch. Heels are open. It's going to turn on the pyramidella, this really tiny, deep core muscle that lives right above the pubis. Your spine is long, whichever variation you're taking. And the somatic mindfulness response here is one of core, the very center of your body. Let's do two more. One on each leg if it's a single thigh. Last one. Bring your legs back up high to the sky. Extend them long, high overhead. Just let your legs hang heavy for a second. 
A lot of us are tied in our pelvis. Drop the left heel. Let it be flat. Take your fingers and unlace them behind the hamstring. If you can't hold on to the hamstring, I want you to bend your knee as deep as you need to so that your hands can safely wrap behind your thigh. And then rather than straightening your leg, think of your hamstring pushing into your palm. So again, if your leg is not straight, bend your knee as much as you need to. Create the bind with your hands, and then your hamstring pushes into your palms. You're anchored in your pelvis. Take your right ankle, cross it over the left thigh. This is a version of figure four. Please make sure that you flex the right foot and gently rock your spine left and right. A little deeper with your breath. And you can stay just as you are. A great way to open the hip and to release a lot of the sciatic or low back pain is to draw the left knee in and bring your hands behind the left hamstring. If you have the flexibility in you, you can hold on behind the shin. A gentle restorative way is to keep the left foot on the ground, right ankle over the left thigh. Breathe into the awareness that you feel in your hip. Know that this is a deep place that we hold trauma. There are emotions weaved like a spider web. Gentle movement of any kind gently releases that fascia that holds any sort of pain, physiological or physical. Take the right foot down to the mat and extend your left leg high. Again, we're going to do the same thing. So a gentle hamstring stretch. Heel is anchored over your hip. And if your hands cannot come behind your thigh, please bring your thigh to you. Keep your left foot flexed. And then with the hands behind the hamstring, you're pushing the hamstring into your palms. That is a safe way to stretch the hamstrings not how long or how straight your leg is, and not how close your thigh comes towards your face. Guide your left foot over to the right. It's in a figure four. We'll keep the right foot down for a moment. Let your arms rest by your side and allow your body to sway again left and right. When we allow space in our pelvis, the sacrum, that energy field of emotion that is deeply rooted can also release. If you'd like to draw your knee in, if you did it on side one, give it a go. And just honor where you are now, not your yesterday, not where you think you ought to be, with a mindset of love and compassion that you are enough. We'll take a supine twist, allow your feet to find the mat. Bump your bottom a little to the right. So just think of pushing your tailbone to the right about two to three inches and allow your thighs to fall to the left. We've created a little more space in the thoracic spine. Your left hand can touch the outer right thigh. Your right arm can open into cactus. Now if you're prone to headaches, jaw tension, any issues with your neck, keep your face centered. Otherwise, take a look to the right. Can you soften in your right shoulder? Can you release an urge to contract the right thigh? Soften 
Soften through your toes. And gently roll on your back. Bump your bottom about six inches to the left. And allow your thighs to fall to the right. Left hand can come into cactus. Your right hand can rest gently on the left thigh. Your body is not a twin. So one side might feel at ease. One side, your breath might be short. One side, you might have an intuition to not turn your head. So physically, we have a voice that tells us, oop, a little too much. And emotionally, we can learn to recognize that same voice. Learning the recognition of when you need your toolbox. When do you need to reach for mindfulness so you can embody presence? Return back to your spine and allow the soles of your feet to touch. Cobbler's pose. I'll take just a moment here. I'm going to ask you to place your left hand on your heart. Your right palm can face down on the earth. Let your right arm come a little wider. Create the space through your neck. And then slowly extend your legs long. They can come out wider than you think they ought to be. Softening through your toes, your ankles. Noticing the rise of your belly. That gentle kiss of your heart into your left palm. A grounding technique of noticing the presence of the earth beneath you. Turn to your body, create a gentle circle with your ankles in both directions. And then reach your hands to the sky, circle your wrists out also. And we'll roll over towards the camera in a fetal position. We use this point of contact just as some leverage that we can return to a seated position. Now I'm going to stay seated on the mat. This is how I practice meditation. But I'm going to ask my friends if they prefer to get a pillow. You can place it directly underneath your tailbone. You can wedge one of our balls behind you like a little spinal support. And we can also take some time to locate a chair and bring it back towards you. I'll take a moment here, just as our friends at home can find their comfortable seated position. Another opportunity is to just remain flat on your back. So you want to think of a space that allows you to be present between five and seven minutes. And invite you to soften your eyes towards the floor. And if it resonates with you, to close your eyes.
Take a couple deep breaths without overthinking it. Breathing in through your nose, if that's possible. And breathing out of your mouth. Do that a couple times. Start to notice the sensation of the air through the nostrils. Breathing through the epiglottis, and not the tip of your nose, but closer towards the back of your throat. You allow the breath to wash over you. Bring your awareness to your heart space. You can connect with touch. You may place your left hand there if that resonates. If you need a reminder of the love inside of you, your right hand can find the left. I want you to see yourself smile. Visualize yourself laughing. Allow the light to come through your heart. Breathe in loving awareness. Breathe out fear, guilt. It is perfectly normal for your mind to speak to you. Allow your thoughts to be a balloon that you release acknowledgement and then let it go. Simply return back to the breath. I breathe in love. I breathe out fear.
I will introduce you to a breath technique that allows the sympathetic nervous system to soften. And the parasympathetic nervous system is a place where we need to spend more time It feels like an inhale, inhale, pause, deep exhale, pause. Clear all your air out, an auditory exhale. Take an inhale through your nose, another sip of inhale, hold. Deep exhale out, hold, breathe in, another sip of air in, exhale out, four counts in, breathe in, four, three, another sip of air, two, one, hold for four, three, two, one, exhale out, four, three, two, one, hold, four, three, two, one, inhale deep, another sip of air in at the top, deep exhale out, release the timing but continue to breathe, so inhale, inhale, Deep exhale. You're in your body. You're present. You're opening the diaphragm. There's a gentle kiss to the heart. You receive more oxygen. You're flooding the capillaries with a new vibrance. And then let that breath go. Return to your own body breathing. I am worthy. May I feel enough. I am joy. May I feel connected. I am love. May I receive an open to love. In the last couple of minutes, I would like you to bring your focus to a time when you did not feel enough, when you had the shame or guilt, a feeling of overwhelm, stress, pain,
And where do you feel that? If you have a contraction inside of you, allow it. Acknowledge that it is perfectly okay. You are having a human experience. All emotions are okay. And now a picture, a bright red toolbox next to you. You can open it with ease. Perhaps the first thing you reach for is a hug. And you wrap your arms around your body and you feel connected. Perhaps it's bringing a hand to your heart. Breathing a little deeper. Picturing a photograph of yourself smiling. Sharing a laugh with a loved one. Reminding yourself that you are enough. Your value, your worth, it's so much more. That emotion is still inside you. I want you to breathe into it a couple times. Allow your breath to get deeper. The one thing that you will always have with you is breath. Remind yourself as we go on with our day, through mindfulness you can find presence, self-compassion. You can turn the word survive into thrive. And to remember that you are not alone. Gently bring both of your hands together to touch. It's an Anjali Mudra. It's also called a resting of your hands in prayer. Allow a gentle space between your thumb and your second finger, and the four fingers touch. Please bring your thumbs towards the forehead and bow your chin towards your heart space. An offering of deep gratitude, a gesture of thanks, a commitment to showing up and allowing yourself to receive. And that's a question that I will leave you with. What do you need? Your hands rest at your heart. Please softly blink your eyes open. And just take a look around your space. Find five things and just acknowledge them.
Four things to touch. Three things to hear. And for us, that's a little harder because we don't have a lot of external noise. But you can also visualize the song of a bird, the air purifier, a hum of silence, the sound of your own breath. Two things you could smell, a fresh rose, the gentle remnants of the soap on your skin, the sense of warmth in your palms, fresh cut grass. Toothpaste. And lastly, one thing you can taste. Your cup of coffee this morning, in my case, a matcha. The residue of what you last ate. So becoming in tune with your senses, the five you can see the four you can touch, the three you can hear, the two you can smell, and the one you can taste. Take a big stretch, reach your hands high overhead, stretch your body like a big yawn in the morning. And one more time, hands rest right at your heart. Come back to your beautiful being. Thank you, my friends, this beautiful community that we have. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you to my friends here in the studio. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day.